Jonathan Doe, General Editor from the Journal of Management Studies, here to talk to you about what I think is probably among the most significant and consequential decisions you will make as an academic. And that is where are you going to spend your career? And more specifically, what institution will you be situated at, at least initially when you complete your PhD? And this is a really complicated uh, set of questions that, that is in front of you. And I'm going to try to break, break it down into kind of its component parts, because I think there are maybe four or five key sets of variables that you want to consider. The first is geography. You may have preferences to teach in a certain country or region. You may have constraints. You may have a spouse whose job is very tied to say large urban cities, or perhaps is in a profession where there are particular concentrations in different parts of the world or particular countries. So you may have some constraints in terms of the geographic um, expanse that you can consider as part of your, your job search. Another would be culture. And this is related to geography because culture occurs, of course, at the national level. It occurs at the subnational level and it, and it occurs at the institutional level. So you'll wanna think about what kind of culture you're comfortable in. I would say some schools might have a more competitive culture where people are striving for success. And sometimes that means having some sharp elbows or some uncomfortable moments. Other cultures might be much more collaborative or more relaxed or more easygoing. And that's hard to tell from the outside without actually visiting the university or, or college in, in question. Another set of variables would have to do with the kind of colleagues that you will be working with. These are colleagues that will be part of your tenure and review process if you're in a, in a tenure track position. Uh, they will be colleagues that will be evaluating you, they may be assigning you to committees, and ideally they will be people that you'd want to work with and collaborate with. So likely you're attracted to institutions where you know something about the faculty there, uh, perhaps you have read or admired some of the work of those faculty, or they may be faculty that you want to get to know better because they're working in your particular domain. Um, now, in North America, we have this interesting vernacular where we put universities and business schools in categories. Like we might talk about a group of schools that would be teaching schools. Uh, and another uh, terminology we use is R1. R1. What is R1? That means that these are the most research intensive universities as part of the Carnegie classification scheme. And in North America, that generally means Ivy League schools and large state universities. Uh, in Europe, you have a very different setup. In fact, you have business schools that are often only business. That is, students are studying uh, business and commerce and not studying, let's say, other liberal arts. They're more specialized. In North America, almost without exception, students, undergraduates that is, are studying business alongside liberal arts and sciences. And so your students are taking classes in other domains and other disciplines along with your business classes. And that might be something that, that is attractive to you, or it might not. But Asian business schools, North American business schools, European business schools, they have different cultures that are derived from the countries in which they're situated. And then the schools themselves may have different types of cultures. Um, now, again, speaking from the North American perspective, which is where I'm coming from, in between these extremes of say a real teaching oriented school, which would tend to be a smaller school, maybe without a lot of um, national or international reputation, and these R1 schools is literally 500 other kinds of universities that have business schools, AACSB accredited business schools, there would be some balance of teaching and research. Well, that balance can really uh, differ between and among uh, universities and business schools. And it might even differ in the particular business school you know, over time. Uh, so that's something to look at is the trajectory of the school. Where is it then? Where is it now? And where is it heading? Uh, and then finally, we have different kind of scholarly traditions. So if you're in a particular area, say strategy, which is my general area, there are certain schools that might have a particular approach to strategy. They might be more of an industrial organization strategy culture, or they might be more of a resource-based view strategy culture. So even in a particular business schools, there may be a dominant paradigm either in the business school more broadly or in the discipline in particular. Uh, but I think the final message I'd want to leave with you is there are many, many options, and one can have a very rewarding and fulfilling career at a whole range of institutions. I think sometimes doctoral students in particular have this idea that they must be at an, a school that has certain characteristics, that has a certain reputation or a certain um, level of, of visibility in, in a particular community. But there are really uh, so many different options. And sometimes you actually have to try those options out. Many, many of our colleagues move around from one school to another until they find that 
that perfect fit or the best fit. Uh, and sometimes your family and professional priorities may change. You may start really wanting to be at a pure research oriented school, but then decide later in your career, you're more interested in administration or teaching or the other way around. Um, so the general takeaway I would leave you is don't count anything out, be open, be flexible, be malleable, and you'll find the situation that works best for you.